welcome. I have a very long drive to make today. I was just at an appointment in the bigger city near my, near the town where I live. And I realized that I might as well use this time to talk to you guys. Oh, sunglasses would help. So let's do this. In case you don't know me, my name's Tema. This is my channel, That Jewy Jesus Chick. If you do know me, well, hello. It has been a minute. It is great to see you. And I have some really important things to share with you guys today. Here's the thing, you guys. I was so tired. And not like years ago or during my childhood, though I certainly was then too. But I'm speaking literally about like two weeks ago. I felt so overwhelmed and so uncertain, so full of striving energy and fear of how I would do X, Y, or Z. I was still trying, despite being saved for six and a half years, to do everything under my own power. And I wasn't understanding what Jesus has for us. I didn't get fully why and how it could possibly be that I was saved and born again by the blood of Christ, why it was that I felt so lost and alone, getting hurt easily by the people and the actions of the world, when I knew, I knew this was not how I was supposed to be living as a beloved daughter of the Most High. I had spent time over the past many years learning the scriptures, reading the Bible, but because I failed to ensure that I was being led by a spiritual family, a human mother, father, sister, or brother in Christ who had years and years of being saved and having integrated the scripture and walking out their salvation and having lots and lots of visible fruit evident in their life because I had improper guidance showing me what to do next. I was not equipped to properly serve the Lord in the way I wanted to, in the way I've been called to do, I believe. And the reason I know this is true is because an emptiness had crept into me more and more over the past six months. As I now can clearly see, during that time I had stopped living for the Lord in my physical actions, and in some ways, even in my mind, I had instead begun, in many ways, walking in the way of the world, striving again, trying to be successful on YouTube. Like, what? What? Well, it's a lot bigger than that, but... I'm sharing all of this because I know 100% that others of you are out here as Christians believing in Jesus Christ, saved, reading your Bibles, but the word and the spiritual aspect of your walk is presently kind of dead. It's flat, it's lifeless, and it lacks the perfect beauty and peace it held for you at some time in the past. And I want to walk you through exactly where I am today and what I am, quote, doing, or rather not doing. You'll understand all of this shortly as I move through and past the barren time in my life into a place of bountiful fruit. And it's not that Jesus wasn't blessing me during this time because he was. He's kept me safe. He's kept my family safe. He's provided for me in all the ways that right? And regardless, I wasn't doing right. And when I say that I was in the world, I don't mean to say that I wasn't loving the Lord, but I would put off my time with him for other things, namely editing YouTube videos. I work full time. If I'm going to make videos, I need to edit them. And that takes me forever. I would say, okay, I'll study my Bible later. He'll understand because this channel is for him. He knows I want to work and put this out to glorify him. But you know what glorifies him? Me reading his word, me spending time in prayer, me getting down on my knees and thanking him for everything he's done for me, me asking for forgiveness in the way that I used to when occasionally I would sin. And this is the most important thing out of everything I'm saying. All of that isn't even the worst of what I was doing. 
the worst of what I was doing is not understanding because I didn't have a church and I didn't have direction that things that he speaks in his word, that they are not suggestions, that they are absolutes. Does that make sense to anyone? Like it's not a suggestion that we get baptized in water. It is in the word that we are to get baptized as a part of being saved. And to me, I allowed myself to be led by YouTube videos and other people adjacent to me that said, you don't have to get baptized. It's just a suggestion. Like it's a good thing to do, but it's not going to make you not saved if you don't. Well, yeah, I, I recognize that, that it won't keep me from being saved, but there's not a single word in the Bible that is there just because they didn't have anything else to put in that spot. Everything in there has meaning and everything in there is for us. We aren't supposed to pick and choose what we do and don't do. So guys, the first thing on my list is to get baptized. And something I learned that I didn't know even after I've been saved now for six years is that we don't have to get baptized by a pastor or like a member of clergy. The person has simply to be a spirit-filled believer. And if that person is available, you can be baptized. It doesn't got to be pretty. It doesn't got to be on Instagram. It's just got to be in water and you have to repent fully for your sins and accept Jesus Christ. Accept that he died on the cross, that he rose again three days later, and that he is the holy embodiment of God. And I know during this time that I have been indwelled by the Holy Spirit, blessedly, because there's no other reason that I would have changed so drastically. And that change, all of these changes, they came like, boom, most of them one day. One day to the next, I was a different person. And I've stayed that different person. That hasn't changed. So... I also can say that the fruit, the fruit that my faith in him has delivered into my life is fruit that I've never seen before and that just keeps coming and is more and more beautiful all the time. My marriage with my husband is amazing now, amazing, and it certainly was not before. And we'll talk about that very soon. In the future, we're going to have videos about this because I want to help other people to come and live the way that we're called to live in bounty, in beauty. And this is not word of faith. I'm not trying to say like, name it and claim it. And this isn't about prosperity or wealth or any of that that dies away. All of that's dying away. This is simply about love for the Lord, his love for us, and what that produces in our lives if we walk faithfully in relationship daily with him. And if we continue to pray earnestly and with all of ourselves. So, as I said, my relationships, my relationship with my mother has become a true and genuine relationship, whereas before it was not. My mother also has been saved by Jesus Christ after 76 years of living as a secular person. As you guys know, I was born to Jewish parents in a line of Jewishness that goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Most are secular. I do have some Orthodox family members, and my mom doesn't really claim herself as having been a Jew, but she understands that like lineage doesn't lie and that like she is a Jew. She was not interested in religion. She wasn't interested in faith in the kind of way that it's talked about in the Bible. She had never even read the Bible. And now she reads it every single day. Like she saw the changes in her daughter, in her blood. And she knew that only something supernatural could have caused those changes and caused them to stay from day to day to day to day and on and on. And that got her interested. So never underestimate the power of Jesus Christ. Additionally, <laughs> my relationship with the Lord has healed relationships across the board for me has brought me to a new level of closeness with my patients. I was given three DAISY awards in the last few years. I'm sorry, three DAISY award recommendations and two actual DAISY awards beyond that because my patients felt the caring that I feel for them. They knew because if it's not there, if it's fake, they know. There were just some things lacking in my walk 
is what I'm getting at here. One of them is that I was not being led by an elder in the faith. So when these things were not completed by me, when there were holes in my walk, it was the, the holes weren't being darned. They weren't being repaired because there was nobody there seeing that there were holes, right? I didn't get baptized like I should have, which didn't avail me to every part of God that I should have been availed to. And that is going to be remedied. And I'd love to take you guys along for that. It just has to happen. And you have to want it. You have to desperately want it. You have to repent for your sins, understanding that you live in and amongst the world, which started out as a perfect creation, which was corrupted when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. When Eve said to the serpent, God said that we would surely die. And the serpent came back at her saying, are you sure God said that you would surely die? And she was like, well, maybe he didn't. I'd really like to be like God. I'd really like to have the knowledge, all the knowledge of all the things. I'll just take this little bite. Certainly won't have any consequences. Hmm. And that was the fall of man. We sin when we believe God is trying to keep the good stuff from us. When we are convinced that what we want in the world is better than what God has for us. Adam and Eve were the first ones to believe that lie. And there was no undoing what had been done. The consequences of their first sin was death. Not just for them, but for all of mankind. The human race is guilty because of that initial sin. And each one of us is individually guilty because of our own sin. Instead of living in paradise, the paradise that God built for us when he created this universe, we now live in a broken, fallen world where the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy constantly. The enemy is the prince of this world. By the enemy, of course, I mean Satan. And he was an angel of God's and he fell from heaven. Basically, he wanted to be God. It wasn't enough for him to worship God. He wanted to be God. And so all he knows is how to counterfeit and manipulate and build upon the brokenness of the world by breaking more and more people constantly. Now, we have to understand that for the wages of sin is death. We used to live forever. Human beings would have lived for eternity. But because of sin, we now die at a very early age. This has to be because God is a just and a good God. During the time of the Old Testament or the Torah in the Jewish culture, my original culture, there was atonement for sin through things like offerings. People would offer up animals as sacrifices. But when Jesus came, he became our offering. Back during the time of the Torah, even before God gave Adam and Eve consequences for their sin, he promised redemption. God always had a plan to make us new again, to give us life, though we were dead in our sins. And we feel it. We know when we've done wrong, even if we haven't heard the gospel. Those of you who are Christians well know this. And if any of you are not Christians and are here just watching the video, I think you can admit that you know it too. You know when you've done something wrong, something against nature, something against God, even if you don't believe in God. You just know it. You know it in your body. You know it in your spirit. So in his steadfast love for his creation, God became man. Jesus was Emmanuel or God with us, walking among the people he came to save. Jesus was fully obedient to the Father and completely without sin. He was a spotless, perfect lamb. According to God, everything has balance. There's good and there's evil. And everything must be balanced. You can't have a crime without a criminal being prosecuted. 
in that way, any of you who love true crime and love to know that people receive punishment for their wrongdoing will love God's heart for justice. So Jesus was the only sacrifice that could fully pay the debt of our overall disobedience, humankind's entirety of disobedience. In his immeasurable love for us, Jesus suffered a criminal's death, a horrific, torturous death on a cross. He took on our sins as his own and took our place. He humbled himself in the greatest way possible by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross, which is, if you've studied this at all, you'll know, it's just so much more horrible than you have ever seen it made out in secular discussions. He didn't just hang there and chill on the cross. They put nails through his hands and feet. They had his arms up, which if you know, if your arms are being supported by the the nails in your hands and your arms are above your head, your lungs can never fully inflate. You can never get that full breath. So Jesus was just agonizing on the cross. He was suffering immeasurable pain. He was lashed and his sides were open and bleeding. Every bit of the torture that they inflicted upon him was very specific, right down to the crown of thorns on his head. You know what it feels like when even an individual hair on your head gets pulled, right? Now imagine this crown placed atop your head, the thorns stabbing into your scalp under the beating hot sun. He hung there. All the while, the entire town, as he hung there, surrounded him, pointed and laughed and threw things at him and screamed at him horrible statements of how hated he was. No one came to his aid. He was so, so thirsty, and he longed for just the tiniest sip of water to quench his lips. And instead of water, the Roman soldiers dipped the hyssop branch with its spongy plant matter on the top into urine and touched it to his lips to quench his thirst. It was a horrifying end for a perfect, spotless man, God. This is what we did to him. However, Jesus didn't die permanently. After three days in the grave, Jesus then rose from the dead. He left the tomb and grave clothes behind and appeared to many people. Then he ascended to heaven. Even now, he sits at the right hand of God, the Father. Death has lost its power, swallowed up in the resurrection of Christ. The everlasting life of Jesus is ours when we turn from our sin and trust in the love and perfection of Christ. God's word promises, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us and to cleanse us from all all unrighteousness, all of it. Our sins are charged to him, to Jesus. His righteousness is credited to us. This sinless, perfect being, Jesus Christ in the flesh, God in spirit, did this for us, for each and every one of us, because he loves us that much. Can you imagine doing that for anyone let alone people who spit on your name, who take your name in vain. He loves everyone. He loves each and every one of us equally as his perfect children. And just like a perfect parent, he would do anything for his children who he loves. The everlasting life of Jesus is ours when we turn from our sin and trust in that love and perfection of Christ. Because the penalty for all sins of all of humankind has been paid by Christ's death, we are no longer under a curse. We have victory in this lifetime 
And we have the hope of eternity with Christ in the life to come. In Christ, we can stand before God blameless and beloved, washed clean of every wrongdoing. Nothing and no one can ever separate us from his love. And this is the good news. This is the gospel and the reason why we need to be baptized. Jesus was baptized. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So if Jesus was baptized and he was holy and blameless and perfect, a perfect sacrificial lamb, then we absolutely must be baptized as well, regardless of what culture says. And that is what I am going to do. I'm putting this video out for a very specific reason. I want to make very clear the intentions I have with this channel. And those are to serve Jesus Christ and to create community among people who love the Lord, people who are curious about Jesus, about who he is, about the heart of God, wanting to know more about him and just people who want to hang out in an art community that isn't super worldly, that isn't going to focus on stuff that maybe you don't want to focus on, the things that are dying away. We're here to focus on eternity. We're here to focus on joyful worship and friendship and love for our neighbor, giving people clear information about truth and having a good time. We want to paint. We want to learn. We want to love the Lord because we serve a tremendous God, the God of the universe who created every single thing we can see. This same God, this tremendous God that we serve is also able to supernaturally provide all of us, myself, I'll speak for myself. He provides me with a peace which surpasses all understanding. And right now, I am experiencing a period of profound refinement and growth in my faith. And it's a beautiful thing, something I can't wait to share with you guys. You can expect from me the following. You're going to see shorter videos sometimes where I'm just speaking on things that have been revealed to me either through reading scripture or through my life's experiences. And the thing is, is after being saved in 2017 and going through a period of refinement that was slow at first and then became stronger and stronger, I changed. I became a completely new and different person. My old person died away and the new me was on the scene. That had been the case throughout my my last many years, up until this year when I started my YouTube channel, took my eyes off of God, even though I created the channel to serve him, amen. And when I did that, my life started to sort of crumble. It really started to crumble when my channel began to do well, when my videos were being watched by more than a handful of people. And let me just say now, If any of you have seen my last video where I discuss kind of the mistakes I made after I had a video that got like 13,000 views and that just broke my brain, I mentioned in that video that, quote, only 40 people used to watch my videos and now like thousands were watching them. And I realized I did not finish that thought. I'm grateful for one person watching my videos, not because of what it's going to bring me like ultimately, financially, attention-wise, etc. I'm grateful because I feel that by being a light shining for Christ, I'm combating some of the, the evil in the world. And of course, by I, I mean through him. He is combating evil in the world through me. And even if it's a tiny, tiny thing, it's a great thing to my mind. So 40 people, four people, or 4,000 people, I'm grateful for all of it. And I should have said that. I thought it, but I didn't say it clearly. And I apologize for that. You guys will be seeing various different sorts of content from me going forward. Sometimes I make paint florals and 
recite scripture. I found a channel that does that and does it beautifully. Her channel is called Copying the Master, and I'll put a link to her channel below. I absolutely adore what she's doing over there, and it's very reminiscent of what I intended to do in the first place with my channel. But I got off on some sort of weird thing where I felt like, oh, that wouldn't be enough. But that's insanity because it's just perfectly enough. It's exactly what God wants. It's exactly what the body of Christ needs, a place to go and listen to conversation on faith while watching something beautiful be done, like painting in watercolor. I honestly can't imagine a better thing one could do with one's channel than that. So I would like to copy the master and copy the copier of the master and put out my own form of similar content from time to time. I would like to try putting out some short form content and things like that going forward. Basically, this is just sort of a, hey, how you doing? I've missed you. And kind of a notice on where this channel will be headed going forward in the future. I did put out a video early on when I started making That Jewy Jesus Chick. It was a lengthy video talking about actually Ouija boards and crimes that involved things that are of the occult, of the new age, that are drastically damaging individuals and causing horrific things to come. I did take that video down because I realized it needed some more work before I was comfortable having it out on the internet. So I do intend to put that out soon. Um, if any of you may have been around around the channel since it first started, you may have to re-watch, but I think the video itself only got like 30 views before I took it down. So I think we're pretty safe. If anyone has video ideas, please put them in the comments because I would love to do whatever it is you guys would like to see. Ooh, I want to mention something quickly. My good friend who I talked about in my video describing how I was taught by YouTube to make art. Anyway, in that video, I was describing Pass It On, which is where I want to be sure that the people that are watching, a lot of people don't have their own YouTube channel or their own blog or whatever. So I wanted to be sure that I was a place where people with something they're doing in their lives that's positive and helping others or glorifying God or bringing peace to their lives in a good and positive way, I wanted to be sure to bring attention to that. And I still want to do that anytime anyone asks me, but no one's asked me to do it. So you guys got to ask, man. But anyway, so she said that, yes, she would love her work highlighted on my channel. And so I did do that. It's at the end of that video. I read from a little essay she wrote about her life, put up images of her paintings. They were recently shown in a gallery and I wanted to bring attention to that. She's also blind with just a very small amount of sight and she's able to use that small amount of sight to make paintings. It's quite a miracle. She was kind of always an artist though took a big break from it and came back to it a few years back and continues to paint even though she is losing sight all the time. So she actually has made a YouTube channel just recently, just in the last like few weeks. Her name is Susan and her channel is called Creative Solutions and Art. And she's put up three videos now at the time of my recording this. She may have more up by the time this video goes out. And she's just put up these speed paints of her drawing some beautiful portraits. So the link to her channel is below in the description. And I would love it if anyone interested would hightail it over there and subscribe to her channel and watch. She's going to be making videos about, about her life eventually, speed paints with voiceover. And for now, she's going to be continuing to make these speed paints just to music, some product reviews, things of that nature. So let's go support Susan because she's awesome and we love her. Yay. All right, guys. Now, that being said, if anybody is doing anything that you want attention brought to for free on this channel, put it in the comments. Do you have a YouTube channel that involves art or some kind of art, any kind of art or something godly? Put it in the comments. Do you have a nonprofit that you want to bring attention to? Put it in the comments.
Or do you have a small business that you'd like people to know about? Put it in the comments. You can also email me at thatjewyjesuschick at gmail.com and I will talk with you about how you'd like me to discuss it on a, a video and I will put it in a video. I'll put your business, your endeavor, whatever it is, your labor of love into a video. So please, please, please let me know. There's no charge for it. You won't owe me anything. So please, 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 I want to help others in any way I possibly can. And if you just need prayer, whatever you need, put it down below in the comments and we will help you in any way we can. All right, guys. So that's, I think, everything. I hope you enjoyed this two pigment watercolor portrait. And I, I will be seeing you very soon here on YouTube. I thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful day. Bye bye. This big black cloud is coming down. Falling angels all around. A warm breeze from the subway underground. The snow is falling.